We're talking about Radilarians from Colombia, from the coastal area of Colombia. Uh, but first I want to show you a, uh, an interesting method to look at residues, at raw residues that you have in a picking tray without any preparation. It is a confocal laser microscope produced by Olympus that uses uh, scanning, uh, a scanning laser ray to get uh, um, three-dimensional images. And uh, you can see uh, it's an it's a optical microscope, but it has a laser beam that is deflected by mirrors to make the scanning. And what you get is, is this kind of images that you have in the lower right of, of your residue. And you have very nice resolution. Uh, and uh, the, the, the thing is that you get, without any preparation, you have determinable, determinable images of, of radiolarians. It's useful if rats are very rare and if you spend many hours picking, you can do the picking directly with the, with the uh, photography. Obviously, the picking is not reproducible because the, the residue moves. You have absolutely no preparation to do it. And it works at scales of, of millimeters to scales of maybe five to 10 microns. So we could use, even determine nanofossils under this machine with the 100 times objective. So uh, essentially, yeah, this, these uh, plates you, you will see were intended for an internal report uh, they are not very nice for publication, but still you can you can see the rats. Okay, first of all, the geologic situation of uh, is is there a, the pointer somewhere? I, ah, here it is. Yeah, uh, we are in in uh, the Caribbean uh, side of Colombia, and uh, I want to. Use the pointer here. Here it is. Yeah, and no. Ta. Oh no! Uh, this machine. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't touch anything else. So this is this is advancing. I can. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You have here the South American plate here in pink. You have the Caribbean plate. Uh, here is uh, Central America. And we are looking at an area which is a vast uh, uh, accretionary prism. The, the uh, Caribbean plate is being subducted under South America since uh, probably the uh, Eocene. And we are in this vast area, which is a, a fold belt, uh, essentially as a consequence of accretion. Uh, the sediments are resting originally on oceanic crust, but they are very strongly influenced by the presence of the South American continent. Uh, just to give you an idea, the outcrops are very poor. It's a flat area which is com completely eroded, and the only outcrops you get there is in quarries. So there is a, there is a stratigraphy to this area. Ah. Yeah, you can see here the lithostratigraphy to the left, the, the, the chronostratigraphy here, and we are talking about the Canzona formation, which is uh, thought uh, to be essentially uh, Campanian Maastrichtian resting uh, on ocean floor. And uh, traditionally, uh, people believed that there was a big gap between the late Cretaceous and the, uh, the Eocene. So no Paleocene and, uh, was known uh, from, from the literature. And there is another problem. There is a chert level in here, and there's another one up here in the late Eocene. And these things have been confounded. And we, thanks to radiolarians, we could actually 
differentiate these two, these two levels. You can imagine in isolated quarries, you, know, you don't know exactly where you are. So this uh, column was based essentially on lithostratigraphy, which was su suggested or, or supposed, and on ages from pollen and spores. So these rocks were considered as being shallow, shallow uh, shelf or offshore sediments. They are shaly, they are rich in organic matter, and uh, it, we didn't expect to find radiolarians in these rocks. But we found a really uh, Campanian Maastrichtian radiolarians in, uh, in the Canzona formation. You see the preservation is poor and the imaging is poor, but still you can determine some of the species. But I really want to go to the Paleocene because that's, that's interesting. We found also lowermost Paleocene radiolarians and what is really very abundant is, this, is these amphisphera, uh, different amphisphera species. This is the holotype by Hollis of, of Amphisphera aotea, uh, uh, which he described from the lowermost Paleocene of New Zealand. Uh, Hollis was thinking that this was a rather high latitude uh, signature, and, but now we found these Amphisphera uh, very abundant in, well, uh, all rats are, are rare, but this is the most abundant component of these earliest Paleocene faunas. So this is very interesting because then we have again, here again you have some other uh, forms. You have the, uh, the, the Eugubina uh, formifera of, of, of the lowest Paleocene. And uh, what what is the the idea of this, we want to discuss this mainly. First of all, we come to the conclusion that the Canzona formation ah, doesn't show up. Well, uh, you, as you. Yeah, come on. I want to come here. Okay. You see, the Canzona formation now ranges up into the lower Paleocene. There is still a hiatus, and there's actually conglomerates here, so there's clearly a transgression here. But the Canzona formation includes the KT boundary. And th these rads, what is, what is, what is the, the interest of this? I think, but that's a hypothesis that I would like to have some discussion about, uh, they resemble Pantanellids. I don't say they're the same group. They resemble morphologically, and they could be ecological equivalents uh, that I would consider as opportunistic uh, forms that invade a high fertility area uh, after, the, uh, after the KT boundary. When there is an ecologic vacuum, and they go in there and they become very abundant. And that happens maybe not only in high latitudes, but also in the tropics. And, and we are here in a tropical, relatively shallow environment, rich in continental detrital and organic matter. And we have these uh, radiolarians preserved in there. So this is kind of very, very strange to find radiolarians there. So that is uh, the conclusion for this fauna, and that, that's all for today. Ah, yeah, of course, <laughs> it lets me think of Pantanellium, but it's still another situation, but again, I think could be related to high fertility uh, in the earliest Paleocene. Okay, that's it. I, I don't get the last slide, but... Doesn't matter. Thank you.